Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani States update for August 7th, 2018. In tonight's update, uh, I'm happy to report that we pretty much have more of the same that we've had for the last two days. And in this particular case, that is a very good thing. However, before I get to the report, I want to say welcome to all the new subscribers once again. And for all those that haven't subscribed, uh, you know, if you feel like it, go right ahead and do so. There's a, a very convenient little button right down there somewhere that says subscribe. Just click on it. And, and if you want to know when I post a new video right away so you can try to be the first to watch it, don't forget to hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can get those notifications. And now let's get to the report. The USGS reports for Tuesday, August 7, 2018 at 106 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time that activity and lava output from Fissure 8 remains low. The morning overflight crew observed a small active lava lake within the Fissure 8 cone, a weak gas plume, and a drained upper lava channel. The surface of the lava lake was about 5 to 10 meters below the spillway entrance. There were a diminishing number of small active ooze outs near the coast of Kapoho and Ahalanui lobes and the Lay's plume was greatly diminished. Active lava remains close to Poiki boat ramp but has not advanced significantly towards it. The significance of this change is not yet clear and hazardous conditions remain in the area. HVO field crews and the UAS team will monitor activity throughout the day and overnight. It is common for eruptions to wax and wane or pause completely, a return to high levels of lava discharge or new outbreaks in the area of active fissures could occur at any time. And residents should remain informed and heed Hawaii County Civil Defense messages and warnings. Over in the Middle East Rift Zone, gas measurements of the Pu'u'u plume take on, taken on Monday and Tuesday morning indicate a reduced SO2 emission rate, lower than the measurement last Friday, and similar to what has been observed over the past three months. No active lava was observed in the crater on an overflight on August 6th. And finally, up on the Kilauea Volcano Summit, the volcano summit remains quiet following the most recent collapse at 11.55 Hawaii Standard Time on August 2nd. This continues a significant departure from the pattern of seismicity and deformation over the past several months. With very low rates of seismicity continuing today, the deformation at the summit as measured by tilt meter and GPS instruments has virtually stopped. Summit and Lower East Rift Zone changes considered together imply that the rate of magma leaving the summit to feed the Lower East Rift Zone eruption has decreased. How long the condition will persist is unknown. It is possible that outflow will pick up again, resulting in renewed summit area deflation leading to another collapse event and renewed eruption vigor on the Lower East Rift Zone. HVO will continue to monitor Kilauea closely for any signs of change in activity. The next status report will be issued tomorrow morning unless significant changes occur. And rounding out the report, again, a uh, notation that there has been omission for any uh, report on Highway 130 south of Leilani Estates where we have the cracks and steel plates across the road. Uh, again, I'm going to logically assume that if there is an omission of any status changes there, that means there has been no changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions. Moving on to the EPA air monitoring sensor report, as you'll notice tonight that there is a bunch of black dots on the map. However, that is due to PEP preparations for potential impacts from Hurricane Hector that some of the air monitoring locations uh, may have been temporarily suspended and it looks like the majority of the ones that I, I normally look at, the Leilani, the Seabue, the Kalapana, uh, are all unavailable. However, the Pahoa uh, Community Center and the Nanavali Estates, uh, both at 7.38 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, uh, were reporting 0.0, .0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide, uh, which is to be expected due to the, uh, the slowdown or potential shutdown of uh, the fissure 8 uh, system. There's not a lot of fumes. I mean, it's still fuming, but there's just not a lot. And that will conclude the general report from the USGS for tonight. 
And finally, we've come to our favorite little part of the video, and that is, of course, the wonderful, educational, and fun-to-do segment called Look at That There. And the first image we're going to look at is, of course, Fissure 8. Uh, we've already seen this uh, image in earlier in the video with the USGS report. What I want to point out is, is a couple interesting things here. If you look at the bottom left hand edge of the, the image, you see this little uh, cave-like structure. That is the, um, the side pool of lava that uh, was uh, collecting as the fissure eight did its output over the spillway. Uh, and the spillway is located right there, uh, just off to the bottom right center of the image, um, where you see it constrict you know, from inside the cone to the, the channel system on the outside. That is the spillway right there. However, I digress. Back to the, the cave on the left-hand side. Uh, this, like I said, was that little lava pond that was cooling as it erupted. Uh, I wonder how far back that goes and even how tall it is. Uh, so there's obviously going to be some very interesting features to, to explore and learn about uh, once this thing cools down. If it cools down, we're still in that wait and see mode. Uh, so all we can do is just wait and see. Now before I talk about this image, I just want to remind you if you've been enjoying the video, why don't you hit the thumbs up button and let me know that, that you're enjoying it. I, I really would appreciate it and, and it does help me out a lot. So looking at this picture here, this is of the, the channel system uh, there before the first turn uh, coming out of fissure 8. If you look along the lava levees, you see all these little, little uh, caverns in the side of the, the edge of the river. And again, I have no real idea how uh, large the, these features are, but this goes to show why the lava was steaming, you know, or the lava levees were steaming when it would rain and why they were still so hot because as this river flowed down, it looks like there may be little caverns or channel ways, you know, little uh, branching fingers out of the sides of the lava river running through the the lava levees almost like veins. Uh, I really don't know if that's true or not, but it would be very interesting to, to find out. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things learned by study, or studying the, the features and, and aspects of this solidified flow if it stays solidified. Hopefully it's over. We don't know. Well, we're still in that wait and see mode. And the last thing in this image, I want you to take a look at that there is, is if you look up at the top middle, you see the big white plume area. That, that of course, is fissure 8. If you trace it to the left, looking at the other little white plumes popping up, and to the right, that right there is the fissure line. Yet, once again, we're, we're accustomed to seeing that. But we're looking at the steam coming out of these uh, well, the actual fissures. And um, that tells us that there is still hot magma, molten magma, un underground in that channel system, even past uh, fissure 8. You know, the quantity, you know, past, you know, the quantity of the magma in the system past fissure 8, we don't know. But it's still hot, and it's going to stay hot for a while. Uh, the 55 uh, flow, uh, the, what was left over in the reservoir, you know, was still pretty quite warm even uh, in, you know, today, well, in May when this all erupted that's why it got pushed out first and it was still molten it wasn't because the the magma came down the channel and re you know liquefied it it was already in a you know semi molten state as it got pushed out okay and here in this next image this is of the the Poiki uh, boat ramp area Isaac Holly Park and as you can see right there in the middle the little glowing red that is still uh, molten lava oozing out of the the flow field because um, you got to remember this flow fields high and the reason why it's so high is because it's literally um, pumped full of lava inflating it almost like a balloon so when the, the the source of the lava you know causing it to inflate and flow like it does uh, is cut off uh, or restricted the, the balloon deflates because it's leaking out around all the edges and that's why we still keep seeing these ooze outs and and little you know flow fields you know away from the, the main body of the flow and real quick the last thing in this image if you look 
down in the bottom right hand corner uh, just there uh, above the the Isaac Holly Park boat ramp area you'll see this little black area just off the edge of the lava flow flowing into the ocean that's actually a little black sandbar uh, uh, basically a black sand sandbar that's come across this this tidal plane so and if you look just to the left of it you see this little spot that's like a little pool of water so it'd be interesting to see how this area uh, changes during high tide and low tide we, we may have a very small tidal pool right there now and this last image we want to look at is the USGS thermal map for August 6 uh, of the flow channel and as we can see there is a huge difference in in the coloration uh, very uh, middle gray versus really bright white uh, except for in a few little spots that still look very hot and that's exactly why those little spots there uh, like along the, the the coast edge where it's flowing into the ocean you see it brighter there those are the hot spots the little fingers that are still falling into the ocean uh, up there by Capo Crater right there in the hook where it makes the the, the turn uh, you see that that little flow there and that of course is uh, the contents of the channel uh, emptying out into the, the the flow field because it's still very warm uh, and but so as you see the the, the channel surface is still quite warm uh, and it, it will be so for for a time being if the, the activity from fissure 8 uh, continues in you know uh, to be relatively uh, non eruptive I mean it's the, the lava in the, the lake is still very hot and it's very still very fluid and bubbling a little bit but I believe the gas coming out of it uh, is more residual in in the magma that's just hanging out in the plumbing system because it's got no pressure you know behind it to, to push it up and out so it'd be like a, a soda bottle being left open it's going to sit there and continue to bubble but it's not because of necessarily pressure it's just the, the gas dissolved in the liquid it is going to naturally find its way out which is I think what we're seeing there but again we, um, we got to wait and see so anyways that'll do it for tonight's update I appreciate you listening uh, remember to check out my smug mug and red bubble where you can get uh, my photographs printed on different uh, forms of media uh, you can find links to that in the description of, of pretty much all the videos uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to share some pictures with me and also get some uh, quick little updates sometimes if I know a video is coming out I put a post there so anyways uh, don't forget to subscribe thumbs up the video share uh, with your friends and family and uh, we will talk to you again you have a great morning afternoon or evening this has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for August 7th, 2018.